I think we have your screen right now. Can you see the presentation, yes, newborn yes. screening? Yes. Is it full screen now? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's start. Uh, I work at University of Sao Paulo and I am the director of the Jeffro Model Center of Sao Paulo. Uh, primary immunodeficiencies are a group of over uh, 400 monogenic diseases presented with recurrent infections, autoimmunity, autoinflammation, allergy, and cancer. Um, for newborn screening purposes, it is very important to have the concept that uh, those diseases uh, uh, may be uh, diagnosed, but uh, one uh, can see a treatment for those diseases. And as well, uh, we are screening for uh, otherwise asymptomatic diseases at birth that will soon evolve uh, with a catastrophic outcome. So the primary immunodeficiencies field is exactly this kind of definition. Many of our babies will be asymptomatic at birth. And uh, if we do not make a, a prompt diagnosis soon, uh, the baby will show up, will present on uh, uh, recurrent infections and will have uh, a very bad outcome. So the prototype of this group of diseases is the severe combined immunodeficiency, which is a pediatric emergency. The picture as you can see here is about David Vector. is a skid boy uh, who was born in Houston, the United States of America in the 70s. And uh, this boy um, survived inside a bubble until he was an adolescent. So what happens with this disease is the absence of the adaptive immune response. So the baby uh, cannot uh, show up uh, active B cells and T cells. Uh, the baby will present uh, recurrent and severe infections, frequent diarrhea, pneumonias, failure to thrive, and this disease is fatal uh, without immune reconstitution. So what we want uh, for SCID, so considering that the outcome is very bad during the first year of life, uh, or, or saying the baby will die uh, before he becomes one year old, what we want is to diagnose this disease as soon as possible. As you can see, uh, if we uh, diagnose and transplant uh, this baby until the age of uh, uh, three months and a half, the survival will be over 90%. And uh, if we uh, diagnose later this baby, the survival will drop to about uh, 50%. So otherwise, uh, the only way possible to treat those babies and recover them is to make the diagnose as soon as possible, preferentially at birth. In the United States, the program for newborn screening in primary immunodeficiencies has started in 2008 and has been implemented over 10 years. Now it is universal in the United States and shows very cost effective. Um, in Europe, uh, as in Canada, Canada currently uh, more or less half of the provinces already you know, screen babies for skid. And in Europe, um, they either use uh, only tracks or tracks and cracks in more or less half of the countries. So it is uh, going, uh, it, is, it has been implementing in Europe as well. So about the costs, um, uh, transplanting a baby soon, either in American conditions or European conditions is much cheaper than doing it later. Here in my country, Brazil, the cost is will be times four. And uh, this is uh, with the money that we spend for a baby that is diagnosed later 
uh, you can use uh, this money to screen many other babies at birth and save lives. So I would say for our conditions here, uh, uh, each diagnosed baby uh, indirectly generates money to screen all of the other babies and find the next baby and so on. So uh, the program uh, for newborn screening for a skid itself uh, pays itself uh, and actually represents uh, uh, money saving and life saving. So before NBS, uh, most of the patients had uh, all types of infections until diagnosed and lately uh, transplanted. Uh, the infections could be fungal, viral, and um, bacterial, and the mix of all of those infections. For us in, in Brazil that we use uh, DCG uh, to prevent uh, tuberculosis, it's a big problem for skid babies as they uh, develop uh, severe complications of skid, either local, regionally, or disseminated BCG involving several organs and systems. Though the modern phase of skid uh, after newborn screening are those uh, kids that they were recovered and they are cured and they will have a future. Uh, so, uh, what happens currently? So, uh, once the, uh, the newborn screening has been implemented in the United States, what we can see is uh, a drop in the infection rates and on family history, because once we detect the babies at birth and we treat and transplant them, uh, the infections are gone and the tragic family uh, stories are gone. Uh, in Brazil, previously, uh, what, we had, what we had is a um, uh, death rate over 90% if the baby was diagnosed of a skid. So uh, it was previously like a death sentence. Uh, once we started our program eight years ago and we did for uh, clinical pilot studies, our uh, currently survival uh, rate is about 50%. So uh, Brazil is a populous country uh, where we have about uh, 3 million births uh, per year. And in the state I live, which is a state of Sao Paulo, uh, we will have uh, uh, 60,000 births per year. So this is good news uh, for us and um, our experience on uh, newborn screening. And we are about to publish two additional papers, which I'll be very happy to share with you as soon as they are published to the user network. So the, this is uh, one study uh, by the Brazilian group of primary immunodeficiencies. We have analyzed um, uh, skid babies uh, throughout the country and have identified several types. This is after uh, our program was implemented. So the phenotype of the skids uh, that we have are here. So the T minus, B minus, and K minus is the minority. Most of the cases are T minus, B minus, and K positive. And on the other third is the T minus, uh, B minus, and K positive. So our general survival is about uh, 60%. Uh, these are the affected genes. Uh, so we still have one third uh, to detect. And here is the collection of genes. It is worthy to say that Brazil is a very heterogeneous uh, country and we have a very uh, low rate of consanguineous marriages. And there is a lot of mixed races uh, population here. So Brazil is a result of um, the local uh, native Indians, European immigration, African immigration, Asian immigration, and Middle East immigration. Uh, and here in this country, everybody uh, 
knows everybody and everybody marries with everybody. So it is everything mixed and um, contributes to a lot of um, genetic heterogeneity. So most importantly, what I would uh, say, the principal message in the ethical point of view is that launching a newborn screening program is not only about offering an, an exam to detect the diseases, it's actually a line of care. Uh, so if you have, if you offer a Trexprex uh, exam, uh, what you have to do is to uh, find the baby, to do the confirmatory exam, and once you do it, you have to immediately approach the family and start caring for that baby. Uh, so it's about uh, um, uh, breastfeeding. If the mother is a carrier of Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus, this mother will be unable to breastfeed that particular child. And if the child already received the BCG, we have to start isoniazide prophylaxis and um, try to uh, phenotype uh, that baby uh, and uh, go for a donor uh, for bone marrow transplant for that baby as soon as possible. Here in our country, we do have a good registry for bone marrow uh, donors. However, as our population is very heterogeneous, uh, many times it's hard to find a donor. So we go for international registries. And if that is not possible, uh, what we do is the haploidentical uh, transplant for the babies. And generally the father is the donor. Uh, as well, uh, uh, whatever is possible to do the genetic uh, diagnosis for providing genetic counseling for that particular family. So uh, we are now starting a newborn screening in the public health system in this country. It is not yet uh, generalized, but we have important states involved like Sao Paulo, Minas Gerais, and the capital of Brazil, uh, Brasilia. And uh, we are working uh, very closely to the public authorities and um, this is a very large and populous uh, country and we hope to be implementing it uh, universally in the next uh, three to five years. And we are very happy to share our experience with other developing countries, principally when we talk about BCG vaccination and newborn screening for its skin. Uh, we have uh, Frontiers Immunology Research Topic uh, which uh, I, would line you, I, would, I would like to invite you to visit and read the articles about the newborn screening that we uh, edited in this special uh, uh, number of uh, Frontiers uh, Immunology. So thank you very much for your attention. I'll be happy to answer questions uh, if there are any.